thanks for scheduling me to speak after such a terrific presentation. Um, I'm nervously scanning the room because I know my brother-in-law is in the audience. So if any of you see a disturbance on your table, take him outside, please. Um, uh, recently, um, uh, in a discussion similar to this, um, we talked about what there was um, to help make Australia successful. And we talked about the trade policy agenda, which has recently sort of come back into the, into the, um, the news media um, quite significantly with talk about the FTAs. We talked about um, the competitiveness of Australian agriculture and the productivity challenge it's got. And we talked about the hard work that has to be done in markets um, to make connections to retailers uh, and the like. Uh, and to address issues like the one that Craig has been talking about, the perception of Australian product. And surprisingly, I found myself um, having spent 30 years negotiating um, uh, issues of one sort or another, um, thinking and saying that perhaps the market access issue was the least important uh, of those three things. Now, it's not unimportant at all. It's, it's, it's highly important, for instance, to uh, livestock producers where you have large preference margins in the big, rich North Asian markets. Um, it's highly significant to many other um, um, parts of agriculture as well. And a note of caution here, although we don't talk about trade policy much anymore, um, there are very significant non-tariff measures which are growing in um, incidence. Uh, and if anyone thinks that the sorts of disciplines that we negotiated in the WTO a decade or two ago are irrelevant, then they're really not thinking about what you need to ensure that markets work efficiently, and that is rules and disciplines uh, of one sort or another. But it, it's nevertheless true that there's a big preoccupation, um, particularly in this country, with the Im immense growth that's coming in this region of the world as a courtesy of growing middle classes, urbanisation, um, all the, the demand that goes with that, and a preoccupation about the opportunity for Australia to do that, to, to actually meet this um, demand. Um, and that, of course, is a very significant thing itself. Most of our competitors, as Craig has said, are well advanced in making their position in many of these markets. Um, so even in markets where we're well placed, we've got a fight on our hands. In Thailand, for example, New Zealand, South African, French and Korean producers have all recently conducted large-scale multimedia campaigns promoting their brands. One of the things we hear at Austrade consistently from across our network, particularly in Asia, is that Australian food exporters could be doing more of this kind of promotional work. While consumers in Asia are aware of Australia's credentials as a reliable supplier of safe, healthy food, our research shows that they sometimes struggle to identify an Australian brand. Compounding this, there's a feeling among retailers and distributors overseas that Australian firms tend to take our reputation for granted. Some of this may reflect practices of the past when many exporters were content simply to see their products off in a shipping container, but the world's moved on. Now more than ever, it's necessary to work hand in hand with distributors and retailers in overseas markets to actively drive demand for our product. The work that Austrade is doing now as part of the national food brand uh, on a food strategy will help, we hope, play an important part in our effort to do better in markets. We've been uh, undertaking this project through a series of uh, consultations and interviews with state and territory governments, researchers, peak industry bodies since July. Let me say, of course, that this project, and here I echo again a point by Craig, this, this project is not about developing a new logo for Australian food products. Indeed, a new logo will probably not be um, part of the outcome. This may seem obvious, but it's surprising how closely associated the concept of brand still is with logo. Uh, this might stem from other practices in the agriculture sector. A brand is sometimes a company's most valuable asset, and it's not just a name or a symbol or a badge on a car. Essentially, it is a promise in the mind of the consumer. 
From our point of view, that raises two important questions. What exactly is our promise, and can we be certain of keeping it? If the qualities we, in Australia, embody aren't really attractive to global consumers, then we've got a problem. Likewise, if the actual product we supply does not match their expectations, the value of our brand will quickly diminish. Luckily for Australia's food producers and exporters, the results of our initial research suggest that neither of these things is the case. It turns out that Australia does have a worthwhile promise to make. And this promise hinges, as many of you would already know, on our reputation for growing and making clean, green and safe products. These qualities sit well with our position at the premium end of the price scale, and our research tells us that Australia and Australian food is already associated with clean, green and safe qualities in the minds of many international consumers. Our consultations also suggest that there's a widespread consumer belief that we can reliably deliver clean, green and safe products. And what is more, consumers everywhere are increasingly keen on clean, green and safe products, albeit for slightly different reasons. In developed markets such as the US, for example, we know the concept of green or sustainable food has increasingly strong appeal. In part, this derives from contemporary ideas about connections between health and the environment, as well as the backlash against chemical additives. But it also relates to a, the desire for a more authentic food experience. There's growing emphasis on handmade or artisanal products and knowing where food has come from. In markets like China, these trends are less evident although not entirely absent. Here, consumers are concerned more about food safety than sustainability. A study conducted by global research firm the Reputation Institute found Chinese consumers rated food safety above all other considerations, followed closely by health and quality, with taste, value and sustainability falling some way behind. The same study gave Australia the highest rating amongst Chinese consumers for safety, health and quality among a group of nations that included the US, France, Brazil, Canada and Malaysia. This result is replicated for safety and health across a range of other developing markets, although France edges us out on perceptions of quality overall. Clearly then, Australia has a strong starting point for a country brand grounded on the values of clean, green and safe. However, observers of the international food scene might point out one small problem. The Kiwis have beaten us to it. Our technology... Um, New Zealand can boast similar clean and green credentials, and they've been actively building their country brand on this basis for some years. New Zealand, however, cannot match Australia's size and climatic range. The diversity of our food and beverage offering provides an additional area of differentiation and will no doubt play an important role in shaping our future brand. Positive perceptions about our food also seem to be tied to broader perceptions about the Australian environment and people. Australia is known for its beautiful landscapes, healthy lifestyle and friendly people. Now we all know that the Kiwis can be friendly too, other than on the rugby field. But there's ample room for us to also take advantage of these images and perceptions that we know go down so well in foreign markets. One area where we, are, where, you, where we rate less well than some of our competitors in perceptions surveys, however, is innovation. As far as food production goes, I think there is a case of, for perceptions failing to match up reality because many Australian food producers do innovate and our food-related technology is often amongst the most advanced. Brand theory, and indeed our own experience with previous projects, such as the Future Unlimited International Education brand, tell us there is room to push the envelope of brand perception as long as this is based on solid factual evidence, as long as we can keep the promise, so to speak. Future Unlimited sought to shift Australia's international education brand away from its prior basis in student lifestyle to a foundation based on teaching quality and career outcomes. Evidence so far suggests this strategy is already delivering results. Now, some two years in, the Future Unlimited brand has been embraced by the sector 
and anecdotally, student perceptions and forward indicators of enrolments, like visa applications, are improving. And I'm confident that we can achieve something similar with a coordinated food branding strategy. This doesn't mean we need to limit or blunt the diverse range of existing brand messages. Our research confirms individual Australian brands across meat, dairy, wine, and some specialty products do very well overseas. But learning from the best aspects of each will give us a strong unified message to take offshore. One thing we've learned from Future Unlimited is that it's always possible to accommodate nuances and distinctions between states, industries, and individual firms within a coordinated national approach. Tourism Australia, for instance, recently launched Restaurant Australia campaign, provides an example of how specific messages, in this case aimed at tourists, can complement our efforts to build a reputation for Australian products in overseas markets. The Restaurant Australia campaign is aimed at establishing Australia as a gourmet destination, but it sits comfortably within a wider agenda of food quality, purity and freshness. Promoting premium Australian red meat alongside complementary products like fine wine, as Meat and Livestock has done, is another example of how this approach can work. The other thing we've learned about branding is that building a coordinated strategy takes time. It also takes effort and lots of close work between industry and government. I give you this assurance. Austrade will work with you, if you like, every step of the way. The next part of our work on this Brand Australia project will be to refine our understanding of consumer perceptions and preferences in individual foreign markets through research and fieldwork. And my team will share the results as soon as they are in. So in conclusion, I'd like to uh, restate a fundamental point. The global food market is changing and we need to change along with it. An important part of this is improving our brand positioning, which is exactly what our food, food brand project is trying to address. And while I've talked a lot today about branding and marketing, the other important parts of this debate, access, efficiency, productivity, and adequate levels of investment, should not be overlooked. Thank you. Thank you.